There has never been a greater demand for game developers. And depending on the time when you're watching this video, you can take a look at the layouts, layouts, <laughs> layoffs in the tech world. So Twitter laid off people, Facebook, even Amazon. But in game development, you don't hear much about those layoffs. Unity laid off a few people, but even they are still searching for new developers. And if you go on LinkedIn, Glassdoor, Indeed, and other websites, take a look at job postings for game developers. You will see thousands and thousands and thousands of jobs for Unity game developers, for Unreal Engine game developers. Yet, why is it so hard to get hired in a game studio? Why are game developers getting rejected all the time? And probably some of you guys who tried that, you seen that. And I did a poll on my Facebook group that I used to run. And I asked people, how many of you have applied for jobs? How many of you got rejected? How many of you didn't hear from game studio at all? And how many of you got accepted? As far as I can remember, it was like 75% of people never heard back from a game studio, 20% of them got rejected and only 5% heard back from the game studio. So what is the issue? Why game developers can get hired? Why are they rejected even though there is a huge demand for game developers? Well, first things first, a lot of people who want to get into game development, well, not a lot, but all, every single one of peoples <laughs> who want to get into game development, they go on YouTube and they search for tutorials, they go and buy low quality courses on Udemy and other websites like that. Coding your own games is easier than you think, you know? You should take this online Unity course on Udemy. And they learn game development, but what they don't realize is that they're learning the wrong way how to code games. They're learning bad coding practices. They're learning bad ways how to structure project, awful optimization techniques, if I can call them techniques. And basically they just copy paste what's being done in those videos without learning anything. That's one thing they struggle with learning and they spend months and months trying to, you know, figure out how things work. And of course, these people never get to the job position. Other type of people are those who try to learn. They follow a few basic tutorials. They go through all the flappy birds and yada, yada, yada. And this is what they put on their portfolio and they try to apply or actually they apply to a game studio. And of course they get rejected. What is, there what they need to do well they there are two things you need to do prior before you actually go on the job interview because that's the next step and one after so in order to get the job interview you first need to have a good portfolio so a good portfolio is the basis of you getting through the door in the game studio so a good portfolio and when you apply for a job there are things that you can do that will increase your chances of getting hired in a game studio and I talk about this in game dev pro I don't want to share everything I talk about but one of the things that you can do is is you can find recruiters who work in the game studio that you apply to and contact them on LinkedIn. That's all I'm going to say. That's one of the things and you can, you know, tell them who you are and yada, 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 all of that stuff. That will increase your chances of getting hired. Of course, there are other things that I talk and I want to share out of respect from people who join there. So that's about it. Prior to the portfolio, of course, need to have skills. So all of this that I'm talking about is taking into consideration that you have skills, that you learned how to make games. You're not going to learn by following Flappy Birds, Udemy courses, tutorials on YouTube. Forget about that. So just take a look at, you know, all the tutorials that you went through, all the courses that you bought. And if they, you know, like, thousands, probably hundreds of courses, and they didn't teach you what, why, what makes you think that you will learn from the next one. So that's food for thought. And when you have a good portfolio and there are things that you can do to spice up your portfolio, such as having a good project, knowing the ins and outs of your project. This is when you get on the job interview. So when you're accepted and you have a good portfolio apply, you get to the job interview. What do you do on a job interview? Because there you will be asked a few questions. And of course, so one of the main questions that you will be asked is about the projects in your portfolio. How did you create them? What did you use to create them? When I say what, which approach, you need to know game programming design patterns, which rarely or basically nobody talks about and all of that stuff. So these three things, so portfolio things that you do when you apply or prior when you apply, basically this can be done before you apply or after you send your application. You can contact people, you can do a lot of things. And when you get on a job interview, you need to be calm and you need to have some other skill set besides game development. This is where most game developers mess up because they think, oh, I'm going to learn how to code in C Sharp. I'm going to learn how to code in Unity, blah, blah, blah. And they think that's enough. It's not enough because you need to have other skills that the game studio needs and wants for you to work in a game studio. So basically that's it. And uh, yeah, I don't have anything else clever to say other than that. So take these three things into consideration before you apply next time for the job and you will see how your chances are going to improve.